In this video, I am going to demonstrate to you how the concept of strictly local language can be implemented in logical data mining. We have sound recording of bird song of Bangley Finch and White Ramonia available in the form of .wav file. So our first step would be to convert these files to their respective spectrograph. To do so, I am going to use a software C Wave. So this is basically a sound mapping software which converts a .wav file to its respective spectrograph. So as you can see, a spectrograph is getting generated and we have set the software to a particular values. So let me explain you this spectrograph. These different frequency bar are known as nodes and a combination of nodes form phrase. So now our next step is to mark every node with a letter. Remember that while marking this node, similar looking nodes should be marked with a common letter. So I have a sample that will make the understanding of this step easier. This is a screenshot of a spectrograph where each node has been marked with a letter. Oh, as you can see, these six nodes are similar looking. So they have been marked with a letter A. Similarly, these two nodes are similar looking. So they have been marked with a letter B. In the same way, you have to mark every node. Now, this is a symbolic representation of the spectrograph of various sound recording of bird song in a sequential manner. This highlighted text is a sequential representation of the sample we have just seen. Let me show you again. As you can see, this is basically the sequence that has been written over here, the highlighted text. Here, dollar represents the starting and the ending symbol. And this number represents the recording number or the final number. As you can see, I have written down the symbolic representation of different sound recording of a single bird. So this is basically our data set. In the next step, we would use the data set to construct bigram and trigram. In this video, I am just going to show you the construction of bigram. For trigram, you can use the appropriate methodology. So for the construction of bigram, we first need to count the frequency of all possible single node and for all the permutation of two nodes taken at a time. Now let us count the frequency of node represented by a letter A. So as you can see, a occur 193 times. Now let us count the frequency of node A, B occurring together. So they occur 60 times. So these are the frequencies of all nodes and possible combination of two nodes. So as you can see we have just now found the frequencies of A 193 and A, B as 60. In a similar manner we have found the frequencies of all the other nodes. Now using these frequencies we would generate the bigram. Let me show you the bigram. Now I am going to explain you this bigram. The circle represents the nodes. The arrow represents the transaction between the nodes. So this suppose this arrow represents the transaction between the node A and node B. The fraction above the arrow is the probability of the transaction. So suppose let me consider this arrow between A and B. So the pr probability is 60 by 193. So how to find this probability? As you can remember that we have found the frequency of A is 193 and the frequency of AB occurring together is 60. So the probability of the transaction from A to B would be 60 by 193. In the similar manner, we will find the probability of every possible transaction. So now our next step is to remove the noise. So what is basically a noise? Noise are the transactions that occur rarely. So to remove noise, we have taken a transaction threshold of 0.1. So what does that mean? That to remove noise, we will remove all those transactions whose probability is less than 0.1. So the transaction like G2A, J2E will get removed because their probability is less than 0.1. So after removing the transactions, the background would remove look like this. Our next step is to find the valid chunks. Each node represents a valid chunk, but node can also be combined together. So as you can see that C is the only node that occur after J. B is the only node that occur after I and D is the only node that occur after F. So J, C can be combined with J, B can be combined with I and D can be combined with F. So let me show you the set of valid chunks. So this is the set of valid chunks. B after I, C after J, D after F and all the other nodes individually. Now I am going to introduce the concept of strictly local language. In our work, we have used the concept of two factor and three factor of strictly local language. So what is two factor and three factor? Two factor is a set of all possible combination of two nodes that may occur 
if we construct an expression from a unit diagram. Similarly, three factor is a set of three nodes that may occur if we construct an expression from a unit diagram. So let us find the two factor of this diagram. So you can see A would be a part of two factor, A B would be a part of two factor. Similarly, B C C H. But you can see H C will never be a part of the two factor because H C can never occur in an expression generated from this diagram. Similarly, we can find the three factor. B C H will be a part of three factor and so on. So let me show you the two factor of this diagram. So this is the set of two factor of the diagram we have just now seen. Here hash to pick the starting and the ending symbol. Now our next step is to check the validity of the two factor of the three factor found so far. This two factor as you can see is valid that is acceptable. To give you a better understanding of how to check the validity I am going to show you a two factor which is non acceptable or invalid. So as you can see on the left side we have a unit diagram and on the right side we have the two factor of that unit diagram. So in the two factor let us consider CH and HE. With the help of CN and HE we can generate CHE but as you can look on the left side that CHE can never be generated from this unit diagram. Hence this two factor set is invalid or non acceptable. Similarly we will check the validity of the other two factors and the three factors. Now coming to the conclusion part. Our first conclusion is that the chunks extracted increase from nearly 74% to 94% as we move from biogram model to the trigram model. And the next conclusion is the three factor gave correct results as compared to the two factor. Two factors sometimes give incorrect results and accepted some string of data even though they were not a part of the data set. Hence, 3 factor gave more accurate result. Thank you for watching this video.